An attacker could hack your system just by knowing your IP address and a little bit more. But is this something you should even be concerned about? Hi, what's up guys? Ryan from Elevate Security. In this video, I wanted to touch on a topic that I know a lot of people are curious about, especially if you are maybe newer to the, uh, the area of security. A lot of times I hear this question come up and it's what can an attacker really do with your IP address? Well, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, uh, you could potentially be hacked. Now, this depends on a few other conditions. Just the IP address alone is not going to do that, but it's going to make things a lot easier for an attacker to do that and uh, a lot more. I would say the nastiest thing definitely would be a cyber criminal framing you for illegal activity. That's very possible. But I also pose the question, should you even care? Now, I like to think of myself as a pragmatist, right? You know, I, I like to look at what's practical here because, you know, none of this stuff is in a vacuum, right? Um, the more secure that you try to be, notice I said try because can't ever be fully 100% secure, but the more secure you try to be, the more mm, inconvenient that's going to make your life, right? That you're going to put more roadblocks in front of yourself. And so it really becomes this balancing act of what is your risk appetite? You know, how much risk are you willing to accept? Now, that is a question that I can't answer for you. It's going to differ depending on the individual. But uh, there's no way to be 100% secure really in anything, right? You can't be guaranteed of, of literally anything. When it, whenever you go and drive your car down the road, I mean, God willing, there is a chance that you could get in a car accident and seriously hurt yourself. But... Are you not ever going to get in a car because you're going to try to be 100% secure that that doesn't happen? Of course not, right? That's kind of ridiculous in some, in many people's eyes, right? I would say the same thing with security. If you want to be 100%, you know what? There is a way. If you want to be 100% secure online, I got the perfect hack for you. I got the perfect tip for you. Unplug the device from the internet. Turn the device off. You, then you won't get hacked, right? <laughs> Nowadays, all your stuff's on the cloud anyway, so maybe you will still get hacked, right? But, but you know, that is the most secure you can be. But is that practical? Not really, not in today's day and age, that's for sure. So there's this trade-off, right? It's how secure are you really, you know, wanting to be, like how much are you willing to give up, right, for that security or perceived security, right? So... Let's get right into it. I mean, there's a number of things that uh, a hacker could do with your IP address. I mean, first of all, someone could get your location and even intrude on your privacy in the real world. Because one thing you got to remember about these IP addresses, uh, these external IPs are there. You can tie them back to a geolocation. So if an attacker gets your IP address, he could track it down to the actual city you're in. Now, he can't tell like what where your house is with that bit of information alone. But remember, this information does not exist in a vacuum. One perfect example is, think of the pen tests and stuff. Think about the hacking that we've done on this channel, right? Sometimes we see what would be seemingly innocuous information, small on its own. In a little banner, we see a version Oh, they're just telling you what version of the software is. How dangerous could that be? And we Google it and we find out, hey, this version is vulnerable to an RCE. And we pop the box, right? When we look at the header to the HTTP server, the IIS HTTPD, we see 6.0. Oh, okay, it's just telling you the version of IIS. Well, then you know the underlying Windows OS of that. And we Googled it and we found, hey, if it's using this header, then you got an RCE, right? And we can get code execution on the box. So remember, information attackers, they they enumerate, you know? We enumerate all the time on this channel. As much information as they can about you, IP just being one piece of the puzzle that could actually aid them in successfully attacking you. You know, what else can they do, right? Let's continue on here. Someone can use your IP to hack your device. Now, we do this all the time on this channel, right? If you watch any of the live hacking videos or a number of these other videos that we've created on this channel, you know how many times? Every Hack the Box video, we get an IP address, we scan it to find the open ports, and then we look for vulnerabilities in those ports or maybe misconfigurations on those services, you know? So, same thing with you as a, 
as a user on the internet, as a node on the internet, right? Depending on what kind of software you run, what kind of ports are open on your network, like what are you using? Do you have a server that you're running? Like you work from home maybe? You have maybe have a WordPress server that you're hosting on your own network or maybe email or whatever it may be. You know, a hacker, if he knows your IP address, he can start port scanning, see what's running, then dig in, enumerate, 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 and potentially hack you that way. Now, also, someone can impersonate you to get a hold of your IP address as well, because you got to keep in mind that uh, your ISP, you know, they own your IP address, and uh, they could reveal it to someone else. And if criminals know your name on social media, uh, it's pretty trivial for them to contact your ISP and impersonate you. This is known as a vishing attack, uh, where they can steal your personal details. you got to remember that these telecom operators are only humans as well, and... Uh, they use their systems use vast amounts of personally identifiable information, and uh, in addition to that, you know, an attacker could always hit you with a DDoS attack as well. Now, this is not going to be a very common thing for most users; probably not going to have to worry about that. But if you, if someone's targeting you, they they could definitely bring your network down. If you're running a server there that uh, requires 100% uptime, as most business you know commercial servers do, then that's going to impact you financially. You know, and of course, cyber criminals can frame you for illegal activity, as I mentioned earlier. This one, to me, is like the most sinister uh, because, you know, hackers, they're known to use these hacked IP addresses to download illegal content uh, that they don't want traced back to them, right? So you could even think that you are doing all the steps going above and beyond. You are 99%. You know, you know no one's 100% secure, but you think you're 99% secure. You go so far out of your way to secure yourself in every way possible, but you own a smart TV or you own some kind of smart home device. And it so happens that that device, that IoT device, uh, the firmware is vulnerable uh, to a easy, simple exploit to get a shell. Well, a lot of times these IoT devices, the reality is a lot of times they are vulnerable to RCEs. And because it comes from the manufacturing sector, it's all about maximizing their cost per their production, per unit price, right? So they don't really, security is not really high up on their list, suffice it to say, a lot of times. So you run into this problem where a lot of these IoT devices are woefully insecure. And there's been many times where you know, they've been vulnerable to RCEs, and attackers know this. When they write their malware, a lot of times they might, like, query Shodan or something, scan the internet for specific devices that they know are vulnerable to these simple exploits, and their malware will go out there and automatically root these boxes. And from there, they add it to their botnet army to communicate back to their C2 as, you know, zombie machines. So that could be definitely a way that your network is, you know, doing malicious traffic and you're not even aware of this. I talked about this in a video a long time ago if you watch my old content, but yeah, you you could be doing everything right as far as what you can control in terms of securing your network and all that and using secure passwords and everything, but just because you own a smart TV that's vulnerable to this stuff, you could potentially be framed for illegal activity. I mean, this stuff is possible, but I wouldn't stress out too much about it. Control what you can control. Um, I would say just, I, I, it depends on your risk appetite. Like I was saying, really depends on what you are willing to uh, subject yourself to. Personally, I subscribe more to the Pareto principle when it comes to this. If you're not aware, it's that 80-20 rule, right? The 20%, like what is the 20%? As a pragmatist, I'm thinking, what is the 20% of things that I can do that is going to secure me 80% of the way? Because let's face it, it's not too hard to be pretty secure overall, you know, up to about 80%. But going from that 80% to 99% is going to take a lot more than just basic security, right? Right. A lot of people that get hacked, a lot of people that get attacked are people that are a little bit, let's just say, less tech savvy, right? Like maybe they're not able to realize when something's a phishing email or they go to sites that are malicious that, you know, me and you could spot as tech people, right? 
Not to say those are the only people that get attacked, but yeah, the 80-20, man. If you can just understand how to secure yourself up into a point, that's kind of, in my opinion, uh, that's good enough. But it depends on you, right? So you, I think it's important, no matter who you are, to have this, you know, kind of run through it in your mind. Like, how much risk are you willing to take on? And, you know, how secure do you really want to try to be? Knowing that no matter how hard you try you will not be 100% secure, right? And uh, yeah, I would just be really curious to hear what you guys have to say on the matter. Definitely let me know down in the comments section below. And yeah, be sure to like the video if you enjoyed this one and subscribe for more content of this nature. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next video.